What's going on guys? Going to uh, explain a little better, you know, how solar works. It seems like a lot of people are confused. And it is confusing. It's a it's a complicated thing, you know, if you don't have like an electrical engineering degree, it's gonna be something that's hard to understand. But I'm gonna try my best to break it down a little easier. I did another video of what you can run on 100 watts and I did my best to explain it but let me see if I can do a little better to explain to you how how all this stuff works with solar panels okay so uh, what you're gonna start out with say like me you just wanted to get your feet wet you just wanted to jump in and kind of figure out you know what you can do and what you can't do because for me anyway it's a little hard to understand a lot of these YouTube videos of what they're trying to say you know and trying to figure it out you know if it sounds too good or if, then it actually is or if it's actually what they're saying it is so with my system and on the first video that I made to explain it I had one 100 watt panel Renogy okay and uh, my battery bank so what we'll do is we'll start with the with the uh, solar panel and I'll explain that so I'm gonna write the stuff out for you all too that way it'd be a little easier to see all right so we're gonna start with one 100 watt panel and that's what it's rated for okay so depending on where you're located at <clears throat> I'm on the eastern seaboard, so we get about four and a half hours, five hours of peak sunlight, okay? You're gonna get a little bit of energy beforehand and maybe a little bit more in the afternoon, but most calculations are done off of that. So, I'm going to say, sorry, my hands are wet. My panel at max gets 80 watts. An hour that's the best that it's going to do it's not going to do the 100 watt so if you're calculating your calculations up off of what the rating is on the panel that's not going to work you're going to come up short you've got to have loss so right off the bat from the sunlight hitting from the sunlight hitting the panel you're going to lose 20 watts at max with full sunlight okay so you're going to lose 20 watts there so then what I'm going to do just for purposes of trying to explain this, we're gonna take 80 watts and times that by five, five hours, okay? So, 80 watts for five hours, so 80, five times, it's down there, it's the other 80, gives us 400 watts that that panel is going to produce per day. The panel gives me 400 watts, okay, per day, okay, of energy. So that's important number right there, okay? That's something you need to remember when you're making your calculations of how many how many panels you're going to use. So let's just say uh, we'll write that up on top. So 400 watts is what we got to play with on that one panel. We'll leave it down here at the bottom okay so let's say I don't know what you want to do if you want to do the off-grid or if you want to pump power back into your system at your house but let's just say you're going to do an off-grid setup and you just want something cheap and simple say you want one light and uh, you know TV and uh, DVD player okay just just for an example we're gonna do a smaller TV we're gonna do like a fluorescent bulb something that's low wattage okay and then the, just a small plain DVD player not high def or anything just for these calculations so for the TV we're gonna say that it uses 50 watts a hour DVD player let's just say I don't know 30 that's probably pretty reasonable watts a hour and the light a fluorescent light bulb should uh, 
should use about 15 watts, you know, for the lower wattage ones. So we'll say 15 watts a hour. Okay, so we got a TV, DVD player, and the light. Okay, now this is how you're going to do your calculations. You're going to look up on a lot of times on the back of your device, it will tell you the wattage per hour, or an easy way of calculating that is to take amps, amps times volts, okay? So if you get on the back of your TV and it's 100, and, let's just say 110 volts, and it's, let's just say, one amp, one amp, okay? So you times these two together, one times 110 is 110 watts. So it would use 110 watts a hour. That's, how, that's one important thing you gotta remember, a hour, okay? So remember that calculation. That uh, will help you a whole lot in all the solar panel stuff. Okay, so by that calculation, the TV would use 50 watts an hour, DVD 30 watts, light 15 watts a hour, okay? So let's just say you're gonna be over at your cabin for three hours and you have children or something that, you know, your reason being you have the TV and DVD player to keep them busy or something and let them watch cartoons while you're, you know, doing whatever you wanna do. Okay, so we will take three hours, three hours, times all of this added up. And you can do this differently. Say, you know, you wanted to run the light for three hours. You take the 15 times three, say you only use the DVD and the TV one hour, then you just times those two by one a piece and then add the total up. So you can plug and play stuff here, okay? So we'll go three hours uh, times 95. I don't know if that's right or not. My calculations ain't very good. <laughs> or hang on, that's five. Yeah, okay. Sorry guys, you gotta bear with me a little bit here. All right, so that's 265. Two hundred and sixty-five watts that you needed for that day. Okay, so with this calculation, these things you wanted to run for three hours, you'd have two hundred and sixty-five watt hours or watts. I'll get into the watt hours here in a minute. Watts. Okay, so by that, one one hundred watt panel with four hundred watts, you have plenty of power to run those things for three hours. Okay, so this is how you do your calculation. You take your total that your solar panel is gonna use and you minus that usage, okay? So, okay. It gives you 145 watts left. Uh, there we go, right there. 145 watts that your panel overproduced, okay? But now, let me write over here. Now this is where a uh, solar system gets a little complicated. So remember this stuff, okay? This is important, so pause it, back up. You wanna remember this stuff, okay? Let me erase it. Okay, so this is where your calculations are going to be a little tricky, and this is where most people get a little flustered, and it took me a while to figure it out. Okay, so we, okay, so starting out, most people's solar panel systems are going to be a 12 volt system. Now, somebody that does a lot of research, they might invest a little bit more money and, you know, do a uh, higher voltage system. So there's a couple different size systems. There's 12 volt, 24 volt, and 48 volt. Okay, this all has to do with 
how your solar panels are hooked up and the size of your inverter and the size of your battery bank. But just for this little demonstration, we're going to say that you're starting out with a 12 volt system because it's cheaper and easier to start. Okay, so your solar panel is producing that 400 watts at 12 volts. Okay, so your inverter will take that 400 watts that your solar panel produced for the day and take that into your battery bank as 12 volts. Okay, and once it gets into your battery bank, then your inverter will take that from your battery and convert that into 110 volt so your appliances and things can use the power. And your inverter has a loss from that. So when you take the 400 watts and it, it's 12 volt and invert it to 110 volts, you're losing energy there, okay? The inverter has a natural energy loss, you know, from heat, from all kinds of different things. So depending on what size inverter you have, it seems like the, the bigger inverter you have, the, the more of a loss there is because it's inverting so much more energy. And, you've, and the heat produced, they have to have more fans on them to keep them cool from overheating, okay? So my inverter that I have, you'll, if you look at my other videos, you'll see I usually have a 30 to 40 watt lossage just from inverting it over. Okay, so that 145, you got to go ahead and minus 30 off of that loss on the inverter. Let's put a W there. W means watt. Okay, now also the same thing with the inverter is the lines that you're hooking up from the solar panel depending on the distance if it's close to your battery bank you're not really going to lose a whole lot unless you have a lot of power coming through the lines and they're too small but you have to have a certain size gauge of wire the bigger you go the less loss there is so you're going to lose some wattage on the lines coming to the battery bank and from the battery bank to the inverter not so much from the battery bank to the inverter as long as they're close you know most people put them right next to each other so it's really not a loss unless it's really little line and you're trying to pull a lot through it okay but we won't we won't go into those losses because that's that's so over the board depending on you know your inverter and your battery bank and the size gauge of your wire and the distances there's a whole lot of calculations in that but you're not really going to lose a whole lot unless you know you go 100 foot from your house and put a solar panel and then come back and put your battery bank you know in your house or something and then put your inverter on the other end of the house then you're going to have a big loss but if you just do like you know your shed or something or, or a cabin and you're putting solar panel into the house 10 15 foot to your battery bank and then your inverter's right there you're not really going to lose that much okay so the next thing is your battery bank okay so let's just say you bought a 12 volt deep cycle battery and say it's 110 amp hours hundred and ten amp hours of 12 volt deep deep battery batter did I write that wrong sure did battery Okay, so uh, this is where amp hours come into play. Okay, so amp hours can be they can be complicated on their own. You know what you're trying to figure out is uh, how much you have to play, how much wattage. So you have to convert this 110 amp hours into something that you can understand. So uh, solar panels is wattage. Okay, your devices are wattage, your inverters are based on wattage, everything's based on wattage. So to get this to where you can understand it, it's the same, same uh, 
equation that we did earlier, amps times watts, okay? And that's all this is where it says amp, that's, the, that's your amperage of your battery. It's 110 amp at 12 volts. So we take 12 volts times 110 amp hours, okay? So 110 times 12, that gives us, uh, let's see, what is that? Let's just, I don't know if it's right, but let's just say 1200. 1200 watt, watt hours, okay? So, that's how much storing power your battery has. Okay, so uh, solar panels only produce on sunny days. And that, what I was telling you on that other calculation, the 80 watts, that's the no clouds in the sky, bright and sunny, and any of you all that have ever had solar panels before, that doesn't always happen. So, you know, you're going to get less energy. So if this system is something that you're going to use like on a daily basis, you have to really look for this. If, if you're going to just come out to your property, you know, once a week, you know, or something where your batteries have all week to charge up before you're going to come back, it's not really too big of a deal unless you're going to use a lot of energy when you get there. So this is the, the little equation here. So I forgot how much we said we were going to use. Let's just say 300. We're going to use 300 watts while we're at our cabin, okay, for the day, okay, and our panels are only putting in, uh, what do we say, 245, and then after the losses, let's just say 200 watts surplus for the day, okay, so we're, we're using 300 watts, or we're producing uh, 300 watts a day. Uh, I've confused myself. We're producing 300 watts for the day, and let's just say we're going to use 200, okay? So what you have to do is you have to, this is your batteries at full charge, so you have to minus this for every day's of use, okay? And after you minus it, if you have a good day, we're going to add the 300, so you're back up to full charge. Now let's say we had a, a cloudy day, and we didn't get we didn't get that. Whoop. We didn't get that 300 watts. We didn't get anything for that day. So, say we had two cloudy days. So you take 200 minus 1200 would give you 1,000, and then the next day you take another 200 minus the 1,000 will give you 800 watts. Okay. So see how it get, gets a little tricky. You have to keep this number up. So for deep cycle batteries, you don't want to drain them past the 50% mark because once you do that, you start damaging your batteries. They won't, well, not necessarily damaging them unless you get them too low, but the uh, amount of times that you can charge them back up and discharge them starts dropping. So if you keep them above 50%, you can charge them and uh, use the uh, stored energy more times, okay? Most people will, will only ever get them down to 60%. I always drop mine down to 50 because it doesn't really give you much energy unless you got a lot of money to buy a lot of ba uh, batteries, but you know, I don't. So you have to keep that in mind for your calculations. So you want to factor in cloudy days and sunny days. So if I was going to use 300 watts a day and I had one battery, one 12 volt, 110 amp hour battery, and I was using that 200 watts a day, and I was going to be out there every single day, I would probably get another 100 watt panel, okay? So it would double your amount that's coming in. So say you just like that while ago you had two cloudy days and you got down to 800 watts okay you're still using that 200 for that day that you're getting it that's sunny that you're getting your 300 watts coming in but you're already down to eight okay so minus your 200 off the eight now you're down to six 
add your wattage for the day, now you're back up to nine. Now say you have another two days of clouds. Now it's gonna drop you back down to seven for the first day, back down to five for the second day. Now see, right there, you're below the 50% mark. If you had another cloudy day, you don't have anything. But if you had two 100 watt panels pumping in, so you're gonna double this 300 to 600 watts for the day. So let's go back. Let's say we're down to the 800 watts and you had one sunny day. You minus your 200 for the next day. That gives you your 600 watts available on your batteries. And you had one sunny day. You add that in. Now you're back to full charge. Say you had two more cloudy days. You're fine. You've had power. So this is how you want to calculate your solar panels. How many you need, how much wattages because you want to make sure you have enough power for whatever you need it for. You want to be more than what you need. That way if uh, you use, you know, that's just a, uh, a brief thing. Say, say you got to, you know, everybody has uh, cell phones. Kids have tablets, you know, iPads, iPhones, all, all these little things, game systems. You know, all those things when you're off grid, they use power. You know, just charging your phone, my little iPhone 5 here uses like 40 watts to charge. So you have to factor that stuff in too. You know, even if you just have a little off-grid cabin or even a shed out somewhere on property that you don't have any electric on, you have to calculate those little things in, the miscellaneous. I usually, depending on what I have, you know, if, if it's just little phones and stuff, I'll calculate in for the day when I'm doing my calculations of how much power I need you know, 50 watts for two or three hours. That way, this phone takes 30 minutes, 40 minutes to charge up. Uh, I want to plug somebody else's phone up or a tablet or whatever. I've done those calculations for that or laptop. Laptops uses less energy to charge than this thing. So I can plug all that stuff in and I'll know. So, hope this explained it a little better. And, uh, I mean, there's, there's so much more to it. I have, uh, I made some other videos to try to explain it. I hope this one's a, a little better and uh, helps you all out. You know, if, if for you all that are the, and you people know who you are, <laughs> if you're the sticklers for, you know, saying something wrong or spelled something wrong or math was a little wrong, go somewhere else. That's all I'm going to say. Sorry. This is for people that want to figure out how to do this stuff. I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not the expert in this stuff. I'm just doing my best to explain it to you all. That way you got a little better idea of how this stuff works, okay? I'm not, you know, big gizmo electrical engineer guy gonna write it all big scientific out for you. So I hope it helps you all. Subscribe, like, let me know what you all think. Thanks.